Hello, welcome to the long-awaited bounty vlog number one about my challenge of 100 hours of hunting on a public program from HackerOne. In this video I will show you what program was that, how did I approach it, what did I report and finally how much I earned. I will also tell you where to find my methodology and my notes. Enjoy! For those of you who didn't watch the bounty vlog number zero, I will just briefly talk about my background. So for three years I was a pen tester and I would say I have quite solid background in web security. However, when it came to bug bounty, I was jumping from one program to another and I wasn't finding many bugs. I only had one monetary reward, which is also covered in a video on this channel. So up until now, I wasn't a very successful bug hunter. When I was recording a podcast with David Schultz, he said many smart things, but one of them was that when he understands the flow, the bugs come naturally. And I decided to test on myself if what's being said in my podcast works for me or not. So I decided to spend 100 hours on a bug bounty program. But importantly, I didn't start it with attitude to find bugs. I started it with only wanting to understand different flows in the application, hoping that the bugs will come naturally to me, like they do to David. The rules were also that I don't want to do any subdomain enumeration or directory brute force, because I just wanted to test if I have to do this or not. The program I chose was Stripe. It's a payment provider that I use myself to handle payments for BBRE Premium. It's mostly an API with which we as sellers integrate, but there's also a dashboard and the scope also includes many other assets. My first session on Stripe was three and a half hours and I focused on the flow that BBRE subscribers go through when subscribing to my paid newsletter. And after this time I understood what are the requests, what are the parameters and so on, but I had no vulnerability. After that I had to spend a few days on creating a video so I didn't hack, but I consciously throughout the day thought about what could I do with this flow. And the idea that came to my mind was to test archived prices, because at first I was selling BBRE Premium for $48, and after a week I archived that old price and created a new of $79. So if someone would be able to use the old price, it would be saving of $31, so it's quite a good impact. So I tried to use the old checkout link, but it didn't work. Instead, I started the flow with the new link, but in the middle of the flow, I changed back to the previous one, and all of a sudden, I was able to purchase BBRE Premium for $48. So I filed a report. It was my first report on HackerOne since about two years. So it was an insane time and I had what Stuck calls a bug fever. I even turned on mobile notifications for Gmail in my phone to not miss any updates. In general, it was a terrible experience because I was getting loads of notifications and every time something on Gmail popped up, my, my heart started beating quicker. The bug was triaged as medium, which was very fair. For medium on API Stripe.com, the range is $1,000 to $5,000. Unfortunately, I was at the bottom of the range, but I was still very happy with this bounty, especially considering how much time I spent. Then, after the next hours, I was understanding more and more flows of Stripe, but I didn't have any bugs, so I wanted to look elsewhere. In scope of bug bounty program, there are also repositories on Stripe account on GitHub. Among others, there are SDKs to communicate with Stripe API from different programming languages or from the terminal. I found a bug there after about two days of hunting. It was very hard to actually exploit, but it was a clear bug. So I decided to report it, even though I wasn't sure if they will accept it or not. This one is not disclosed, so I can't really tell you more about it. But if you are a member of BBRE Premium, you actually know what method did I use to find this bug. Because I can't tell you this is the tool that I used to find this bug, because it's confidential. But I can easily tell you among tens and hundreds of other tips in BBRE Premium, this is how to use this tool. And I know that it's the method 
to exploit this bug. But you don't know this. But if you read everything carefully, you know the methods that I used. So this is what I do on BBR Premium. So read everything carefully. And after a few months, maybe after disclosure, you will realize that the article you read half a year ago was the method that I used to exploit this bug. Coming back to the bug, it was rewarded $500 as a low, which I agree with, which was on the other hand, top of the range for this asset. So at this point, things were looking really, really good, much better than I expected, because after about 24 hours of hunting, I earned $1,600 with retests. But then came the hardest part. I wasn't finding anything throughout the next hours. I was spending most of my time on Stripe.com, but I also looked at other assets. After about 45 hours, I was seriously considering ending the experiment after 50 hours, but I stuck with it. After 60 hours, I was pretty much sure I won't find anything anymore, but I just wanted to complete that for the video. I was really unmotivated and there was a lot of procrastination, which is one of the reasons why it took me so long to complete this 100 hours. But then, after 82 hours, I found another bug, which later turned on to be my biggest payout. It was another open source application from GitHub and it's also pending disclosure, so I can't tell you more details about it. It was classified as low, with which I don't quite agree, but apart from $500 of base payout, I also got $1,000 of bonus because they were happy that I'm attacking this particular asset for a total of $1,500. Most of the remaining time I spent trying to find a bypass for this last vulnerability, but I didn't find anything. So after 100 hours, the final result is $3,100. But is it really final? Maybe yes, but maybe not, because the second bug, they tried to fix it, but they didn't. And it wasn't even a bypass. The original proof of concept I presented still worked after the attempt to fix it. So I mentioned it in a retest, I mentioned it in comments, but there was no action from their side. So after exactly 90 days from the original submission, I decided to report it again to maybe get the same bounty twice. And as I said previously, if they would close it as informational the first time around, I wouldn't object. But for me, maybe my understanding is wrong, you can write in comments what do you think about it. When you triage, pay and resolve the report, you kinda commit to fixing it. So the second report was closed as duplicate, but I opened mediation and I don't know yet how it will end. And another thing is that for this video, I am also giving you my notes. More about it later, but before disclosing them, I wanted to contact Stripe if they are okay with me publishing this information. Because among typical nodes, there were also things that I call quirks or potential vulnerabilities, which weren't risky enough for me to report it, but I hoped that maybe I will be able to change them one day. For example, there was a past traversal in Stripe CLI or two XSSs without content security policy bypass. All they told me back is that if I disclose something that turns out to be a vulnerability, then I will not be paid for it. It didn't change anything because if I wanted to submit any of this before, I would do it long time ago. But one useful thing they told me is that they do accept XSSs without CSP bypass. And I had two of them. They were on in-scope domain, but they were really hard to actually exploit to do something malicious. So I didn't really want to report this, but I decided that I report one of them. And if they accept this, I will consider reporting the second one, but I don't think they will accept this submission. I can already tell you that there will be a second part of this bounty vlog. After those reports are closed, I will tell you more about them, I will show you my notes and I will answer your questions. You can submit them in the comments down below, but the second part will be a live stream on YouTube, so you will be also able to ask me questions in the real time on the chat. But don't ask me when will it be, because it doesn't depend on me. So let's think about if this $3,100 is a lot or not. 
But before doing that, let's clear up what does the 100 hours number mean for me. Because many of you probably think that it's 8 hour workday times 12 and a half. So 2 and a half weeks of full time work. But it's not. Instead, I log only the real time of working and from a typical 8 hour workday, excluding breaks, useless meetings, responding to emails, procrastination and so on, you probably get 5 to 6 hours on a good day. For me, 100 hours means about a month. Of course, I also do videos, the newsletter and so on and so on, so for me it was spread across 3 months. But if I was only doing bug bounty, it would take 1 month to complete 100 hours of hunting. Is it as much as I would earn as a pen tester? No, not even in Poland. But I'm still very happy with this number because at the beginning I didn't believe this experiment at all. I thought I will find nothing. So this number, on the other hand, is something that I can easily live for for a month in Krakow. Some of the factors that motivated me to quit my job is that I'm young, I don't have kids, debts and inflation of living standards hasn't hit me badly, at least not yet, so I don't spend that much. On the other hand, Stripe is a well-paying program and those are only two lows and one medium when you think about it. There are a lot of what-ifs because those bugs had the impact, but also there were a lot of prerequisites for the attacks to be possible. So if some of those prerequisites were not there, or maybe if I would get the middle of the range with the medium risk bug, the payout would be much higher. And also with only those free submissions, I made it to top 7 on the leaderboard. And in activity you can see that no one apart from me in this time submitted more than one report to Stripe. The important takeaway for me is the type of assets that I attack, because out of those 100 hours I spent majority, maybe 60 hours on Stripe.com and I only found one bug after 4 hours and then nothing after 56 hours. I had many potential bugs, something that I could chain and I hope that magically something that I found after 10 hours I will be able to chain or turn into a bug after 50 hours with something else. But this moment never came. It taught me that even though Stripe is very big, it's not as complex as let's say Google. Because for example, when you have one YouTube video, you can watch it on YouTube, you can watch it on YouTube TV, you can see it from YouTube Studio and then you can also access it from Google Ads. On Stripe I found very few places where the same resource was modified from different components, from different parts of the application and I think it made hunting harder. And of course there is no question about the fact that I simply missed a lot of bugs, as we all do. On the other hand, when I look at the time invested into open source assets, it was well worth it and I think in the future I should focus more on that. Now, if you believe you will find bugs that I missed, or you just want to see how I organize my notes, check out my whole Notion page with notes that I take throughout this 100 hours. Of course, there are some confidential parts that I had to redact, but majority is still there. You can get them if you sign up for BBR newsletter, but I promise you, you won't regret this. The link is in the card right now or in the description. If you want to go even step further and learn with me in BBRE Premium, check out premium.bugbountyexplained.com. I think it will be quite interesting after these bugs get disclosed, I will be able to point you that the tip that led to this bug was published in this issue of the newsletter a few months earlier. For the next episode, I will go more into the source code analysis because I will spend 100 hours on Elastic. To not miss that episode, subscribe to the channel and like this video so YouTube recommends my videos to you and also to other hackers that will find it helpful. For now, thank you for watching and goodbye.